no more a stranger, stranger, Son of God of humble birth, Beautiful the story, Praise his name in all, all the earth, Hail the King of, of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In, in you, O Lord, do I take refuge. refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into, Into your hand, hand I commit my spirit. You, you have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. God. Glory be to the, the Father, and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, Hail the Son of Righteousness, Light and life to God He brings. Wing in his wings, mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to 
the newborn King. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the midst of our sufferings for the sake of Christ, grant us grace to follow the example of the first martyr, Stephen, that we also may look to the one who suffered and was crucified on our behalf and pray for those who do us wrong through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of St. Stephen is from 2 Chronicles, chapter 24. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to the king. And the king listened to them, and they abandoned the house of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and served the Asherim and the idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this guilt of theirs. Yet he sent prophets among them to bring them back to the Lord. These testified against them, but they would not pay attention. The Spirit of God clothed Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, and he stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, Why do you break the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has forsaken you. But they conspired against him, and by command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. Then Joash, the king, did not remember the kindness that Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, had shown him, but killed his son. And when he was dying, Zechariah said, May the Lord see and avenge. This is the word of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The second reading is from Acts chapters 6 and 7. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. And some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freed men, as it is called, and of the Cyrenians and the, of the Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom of the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law, for we had heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, as you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. 
But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of innocent Abel, to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. God has made us his people by our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your servant, Saint Stephen, whom your Son received into his glory at the right hand. May we, your people, imitate him in faith and love to speak your truth with boldness, to forgive those who sin against us as Christ forgave his persecutors from the cross, and to fall asleep in him. When our last hour comes, let us be born into eternal life and receive the crown of life for the sake of him who was born into our flesh to redeem it, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. It's not Christmas red on our chancel furnishings today, but blood red. This day after Christmas, December 26th, is set aside on the church's calendar to commemorate the feast of St. Stephen, the first Christian martyr. Oh, there were many others to come, though. We don't usually think of all of them who gave their lives for the testimony about Christ. In fact, it rolls off our tongue rather easily when on our confirmation day, the pastor looked you square in the eye and asked you this question. See if you remember it. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and faith and suffer everything, even death, rather than fall away from it. Do you remember that? But that question wasn't just a formality. Others have gone on this road before us, the road of faith, and many of them have suffered death rather than part from the Lord who bought them with his own blood. We know some of them like, by name, like Stephen or Thomas, or any of the other disciples, save John, of course. The vast majority, however, will go unknown except to God. But they are, as we truly sang, a noble army, men and boys, the matron and the maid who now around the Savior's throne rejoice in robes of light arrayed. And so it is that the church moves from Christmas Day to St. Stephen's Day, fresh from the manger where we meet the cross, and now we are the better for it. We come to know the price tag of Christmas. That, in, that even though the grace of God for you is completely free, not because of any good works that you and I have done, that grace of God is not cheap. We're reminded that it costs the Son of God his very life. He and his faithful are locked in a cosmic conflict against the forces of sin. Darkness, death, and hell. And with the way in the manger still ringing in our ears, today we sing, the Son of God goes forth to war. And we learn that we too must be engaged in that battle. Today we learn too that there is a price to be paid, to be in service of the Lord, who gave up all that he had to give us that for which we could never hope to dream. Namely, the forgiveness of sins here, and then and there, the life and the light of the eternal joys that are at the Father's hand in glory for us. We pray that God will give us grace to pay that price, to follow in the train of those martyrs. Now, mind you, there's a price to be paid and it's going to become steeper and steeper in this dark world we live in. It's hard to tell because you and I have so many comforts in this life, but there is a price to be paid for being Christian. It doesn't go all that well when Christians refuse to march along with the drum and the world around us, that drum that beats so loud and long and begs us to question those things that we hold near and dear and the faith that we hold for instance, when the world declares open season on unborn babies or frail elderly people, 
It's not popular today to speak up in defense of life. And you won't win many friends that way. But because we believe in Jesus Christ, who is the author and giver of life, we defend the weak and the helpless, such as the life that we have in Christ together. Or when our culture, for instance, lobbies loud and long that happiness, true happiness, is a matter of goods and income, and that in the game of life, whoever dies with the most toys wins, you're branded as a loser when you refuse to bend the knee to the great God of materialism and wealth. In other words, there's a price to be paid. But that is the life that we have in Christ. And so maybe it really is good that our church calendar is marked red on the day after Christmas, before we packed up all the decorations and put away the tinsel, before we head out to exchange our gifts and buy the trinkets that are now on sale because their price tags have been reduced. If the price tags don't tell you, the color red will. All that glitters is not gold. The things of this world fade quickly and are worth nothing. Only the things of the kingdom of God last forever. And that's the way it is with all of the admiration and respect that you can get from the people around you. It's fleeting. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. It isn't worth anything in the end. After all, what use is the admiration of people if you have to turn your back on God in order to get it? The example of Zechariah in the Old Testament reading and Stephen in the second reading today are certainly examples of that. They came to speak the word of truth to turn people back to God or to turn people to Jesus Christ, and they were not only ridiculed but killed for it. And then there's our Lord Jesus, too, who came to bring light and life to the world by bringing people back to God, and what did it get him? And what will it get you if you speak the truth of Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the only Lord and the only way to salvation? Well, it depends. It will probably be a hard road. But what does it matter what the world thinks if you lose your life with God? Jesus put it rather bluntly. What good is it if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Stephen's an example for us. Here's a man who would be the first one to tell you that there's nothing that he could give in exchange for his soul. It had already belonged to someone else. He knew. Stephen knew that he belonged to Jesus, that he had been paid for with the blood of Christ. And so he couldn't help but speak the truth of what he had heard and seen even though it did cost him his life. And he didn't die peacefully in bed or of old age, but rather a victim of violence at the hands of those who could not bear to hear the testimony about Jesus anymore. Like Jesus before him, Stephen prayed that his attackers would be forgiven and that the Father would receive his spirit. And then he died as he lived, confessing the Lord who had bought him with his own blood. And why do we need to talk about this right now? Why should we be reminded of such a bitter chapter in the history of the church on the heels of our Christmas celebration? Because the truth is, it is our history. That's why. Because there is a price tag on Christmas. Because what happened to Stephen was not some glitch in God's wonderful plan. You see, God's wonderful plan for the salvation of the world involves real people. And real people suffer. Real people cry. Real people die. And it was for a real world filled with real people that the Son of God came down from heaven. For the real world, for real people, in this world is a place where there's pain and tears and death. And for real people in a real world, the eternal word of God came to be born in a real human flesh and blood, the infant son of the virgin mother laid in a manger in Bethlehem. It was for real people in a real world that Jesus took upon himself 
all of our real sin. And he was nailed to the cross and died a real death, shedding his real blood as the atoning sacrifice for the world, for the real world. And so we go out today not knowing what faces us in this real world in which we live, but we do have the Lord's own word that what happened to him could very well happen to us. We are in the world, Jesus says, but we are not of the world, and so we must be careful out there because not all the people we encounter have faith or trust in him. And we have formidable enemies. The devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh are lined up in opposition to the faith that you and I confess. But we have this confidence, and this confidence is enough. Though we may not know what the future may hold, we know who holds the future. We know whose hand is leading us. We know whose love is supporting us. And we know the end. We know that Christmas finds its end goal not in some fairy tale, marshmallow world of snowmen and rosy cheeks and empty sentiments, but around the throne of glory. And there, at the right hand of the Father, is the one who once was dead, but now lives forever to make intercession for us. Yes, his blood red banner streams afar, but it is a banner of triumphant victory for all who believe. And there is a path that leads from the manger to the cross and through the cross to glory. As it was for Jesus, so it will be for you. This is the call to faithfulness for all the saints. This is your call to faithfulness. Do not be surprised if you are called upon to pay a price for your faith. And be sure of this. Everyone, everyone who abides faithful unto death will in the end receive the crown of everlasting life promised through your Lord Jesus Christ for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in singing the offertory. Please stand. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew our right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Preserve your church, O Lord, and let her ministers be your treasured possession through whom you empower with your Holy Spirit to proclaim your word with boldness that your church and her congregations may prosper. Your will, O Lord, is good for your people, and you gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Preserve our families, especially the children of Christian parents, that they may grow in the knowledge of you and of Christ Jesus. Behold, O Lord, the princes and rulers of this world, do not let those who serve you abandon your house. Turn the hearts of those who serve false idols to hear your word of truth. Give peace in our time that the confession of the incarnate Savior may have free course and be preached to the glory and edifying of your holy name. Giver of all good, grant your healing and support to all those who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of eternal life in your kingdom. Holy God, your Son stands at your right hand in your majesty. 
powerful, to be present and active with his church scattered throughout the world. Give your blessing to all who receive his true body and blood in the sacrament this day, that in this fellowship we may receive his pardon and strength to journey in our life in your name. Bless us, O Lord, in all these gifts that we receive from you, that we might offer our lives as a, atoning as the sacrifice of thanksgiving for your rich gifts in our lives. These things we ask in the name and for the sake of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, in the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lord, no.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. that we will 